Hi, I'm Bri. Welcome to the yoga studio at the Allo Yoga flagship store here in Beverly Hills. I'm super excited to share this practice, Power Vinyasa Flow, with you. We're going to sweat, flow, breathe together. It's going to be so much fun. And if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and post your comments below. Let's begin in child's pose. Your shins on the mat, knees bent. Take your forehead down and your arms forward. So it was really nice to let the skin on your forehead crease gently towards your nose. So you can just take a moment here to really let go of all of that unneeded tension from the jaw, the neck, and the shoulders, and especially the mind. In yoga, we use a breath technique called ujjayi, which is that slight restriction of the muscles at the back of your throat. So you can really slow your inhalations and exhalations down. It's almost like the sound of ocean waves. So breathing in and out of your nose, just a couple of rounds, see if you can begin to get those inhalations and exhalations equal. It's not only a really great way to release tension, but also to build internal heat for your practice. And one of my favorite things to do right before I begin to move, sweat, and flow is just to take a deep clearing breath. So let's do one together. Take a deep inhalation here. Open your mouth, sigh it out. Push down through your hands. Tuck your toes under, inhale, and exhale. Find downward facing dog, lifting your butt up. Finding this upside down V. It looks quite simple and it can be quite simple, but you are bearing a lot of weight on your arms. So make sure that your hands, your arms, and your shoulders are holding you up correctly. Looking forward at your hands, spread your fingers. Make sure that your hands are realistically shoulders distance. Think about continuing to grip with the fingertips and the knuckles. Now relax your head, spread the shoulder blades, lift the navel. Come high up on your toes as you inhale. As you exhale, bend your left knee, straighten your right leg. Just working into that tight back body. Maybe it's the calves that are tight or the hamstrings. And just switch sides, bending your right knee, straightening the left leg. One of my favorite things to do here. You can pedal it out as much as you like. Quickly, slowly, whatever works for you. And then coming high up on the balls of both feet as you inhale. As you exhale, both heels root towards the earth. It's okay if they don't touch. If you feel super rounded, put a little bend in your knees. And just feel the magic of this very foundational uh, yoga posture, right? Simple downward facing dog. You're probably already starting to feel the heat. Strong, straight arms. Inhale, shift forward into plank pose. If it's too much for you, you can always put your knees down. Just focus on really hugging the upper arm bones in, spreading the shoulder blades wide, and strengthening the front of your body, so really lifting the navel and the ribs. Now, if your knees are up on the ground, go ahead and lift your knees up. Inhale, shift all the way forward onto the tips of the toes so the shoulders go past the wrists. Again, you can put the knees down if needed. If not, bend the elbows for chaturanga nice and slow. Then down all the way to your belly. Just warming up the arms. Now let's warm up the shoulders. Down on the belly, untuck your toes. Move your hands back underneath the elbows. And begin to pull the hands back towards the feet to lift the shoulders up. Little low cobra. Keep pulling and pushing with the hands. Lift a little bit higher. Inhale, shine the heart forward through the gateway of the shoulders. Maybe even gaze up. Now exhale, tuck your toes under, use your navel, lift back up, plank, downward facing dog as you exhale. Great job. Enjoying this down dog and knowing that you can come back to child's pose or down dog anytime you need to rest. Listening to your body is one of the most important parts of cultivating a yoga practice. Look forward towards your hands, rise high to your toes, bend your knees, and exhale, just step your right foot 
and your left foot towards your hands. Taking your feet about two fists distance apart or hips distance. Inhale to a flat back, little bend in the knees. Exhale, fold down. Grab a hold of opposite elbows. Relax your head, your neck, but engage your legs. So we're stretching our hamstrings, even stretching into the low back. But you definitely want to protect the back of the body by engaging the front of the body. So lift the quads. Make sure your quads are turned on. I like to even do a little grip check with my hands. Make sure you're lifting the kneecaps up and drawing the navel in. Feels so good to stretch the back body. Take a deep inhalation here. And exhale, sigh it out. Fingertips underneath the shoulders. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, fold down one more time. Inhale, rise all the way up towards standing, sweeping the arms out to come up. Gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale, hands come to your heart. Now let's start to move together. Make sure your big toes are touching, a little space between your heels. Inhale, reach the arms out to come up once again. Exhale, open the hands out wide and swan dive it forward into that forward fold. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, step back into that plank pose. Knees up or down, shift all the way forward onto the tips of the toes. Exhale, chaturanga. This time, inhale, untuck the toes, keep the pelvis and knees off the ground. Open the heart up, maybe even gaze up for upward facing dog. Exhale, lift your navel. Downward facing dog. Breathing here, using that ujjayi pranayama. That was one round of Surya Namaskar A, or sun salutations. We're going to do two more together. Feel free to continue stepping forward and stepping back. On the second round, I'm going to add in some jumps. Bring your feet together. Inhale, look forward as you rise to your toes. Bend your knees and exhale, take a light hop to the front of the mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise all the way up towards standing. Exhale, hands come to your heart. Great job. Inhale, reach the arms out to come up once again. Exhale, diving forward. Inhale to a flat back. Feel free to step back to plank, lower down chaturanga, or plant your hands flat. Come high up on the toes, bend the knees, and see if you can jump back, bend the elbows simultaneously to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Allowing this conscious breathing to be a foundational part of your yoga practice. What sets this practice apart from your traditional moving or aerobics is this breath. Stay connected with it. Let's try one more hop. Bring your feet together. Come high up on the toes as you inhale and bend your knees. Then think about kicking your heels to your butt. See how high you can get your hips. Land at the front of the mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale, root to rise, all the way up towards standing. Gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale, hands to your heart. Last round. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, diving forward. Inhale to a flat back. Either step or hop it back through your vinyasa. We'll meet in that downward facing dog. Breathing here. Hmm. So just to complete our round, we'll land back at the front of the mat. Bring your feet together. Inhale, rise high to your toes. Keep your arms straight. Look forward, bend your knees and exhale, hop or step to the front of the mat. Inhale to a flat back. Make sure your big toes are touching. There's a little space between your heels. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rising all the way up towards standing. 
Exhale, bringing your hands to your heart. I'm just taking a moment here with your eyes closed, connecting with your breath, feeling your body. And let's keep moving forward. Bend your knees, open your eyes first, bend your knees, tap the ground with your fingertips so that you know that you've gotten low enough. Bring the weight back so that your heels have most of your weight, and then inhale, reach your arms up into chair pose. Not one of my favorite poses out there, but typically what you don't like is what you need the most. <laughs> so stick with it, move the weight slightly back into the heels so when you look down, you can see your toe tips. Staying here, inhale, let the sides of your waist lift so you find nice length through the sides of the waist. And then exhale, draw your ribs in. You're probably wondering when she's going to stop talking so we can move forward. The time has come. Inhale, rise high to the toes. Little toe stand here like you're wearing a six-inch heel, which I rarely do. <laughs> inhale. And exhale, see how slowly you can lower your heels, or your butt, that is, down to your heels. Whew. Great way to tone the quads. Once you get there, open the knees wide. Lean forward so you find this nice forward fold. And push your heels back so you have two actions going on. You can always stay here in this traditional garland pose, just dropping your head down. Or you can wrap your triceps around the fronts of your shins taking the arms back, holding on to the heels, and really pulling the crown of the head down. This is a great prep for Bakasana Crow Pose, which is where we're going next. If you've never done it before, just take a quick peek up here. So inhale, we're gonna come onto our hands, making sure your hands are underneath your shoulders. Lifting the butt up, put a little bend in the elbows and do your best to work your kneecaps high up into the triceps. Then, as if you're doing a bit of that cat pose, that angry cat, spread the shoulder blades to create some space and some strength in the upper body. Maybe, looking forward, maybe trying to lift one foot up off the ground. If you've got that, point the toes, pull the heel to the butt. You can try changing feet or doing both feet. Heels in, engage your hamstrings, really push through the hands, draw the navel in, inhale, and exhale, step or jump back through the vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Whew. My core is warm. <laughs> Hopefully yours is too. We're going to keep moving. Bring your feet together for some Surya Namaskar B. Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. So the tendency here is to really open that leg. I want you to focus on that strong core. So hug your inner thighs together. Square your hips. Draw the ribs and the navel in. You'll even feel this in that left calf and hamstring. Inhale. Exhale, bring the knee forward towards the gateway between the elbows. Push down through the hands, really lift your butt up and see what it's like to step that right foot forward. If you don't quite get there, just use the right hand, step it forward. Spin that left heel down, line it up hips distance. And then inhale, rise up into warrior one. So the goal here is to get your torso, your pelvis, your gaze, all facing forward. See what it's like to really pull that right hip back and in, bending that right knee deeply, rolling the left inner thigh back, and lifting your navel. Feeling like that strong warrior. Hmm. Take a deep inhalation. Inhale. Gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale. Take the hands down. Step back, plank pose. Inhale. Shift forward on the toes. Exhale. Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, down dog to complete that vinyasa. Mm, feeling that difference, hopefully there is one, between the right and the left sides. And then using our yoga for what it truly is for, to find balance. Bringing your feet together, moving to the left side. Inhale, left leg reaches up and back. I like to point my toes, it really helps to contract the hamstring. Pressing the right heel down, drawing the navel in. Inhale fully. Exhale, knee to nose. Bring that left thigh as high as you can. Round the upper back and then step your left foot forward. Remember, if it doesn't come all the way, you're human. <laughs> Use that left hand to step it forward. Spin the right heel down, hips distance. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. Hmm. Breathing here. 
thankful to be off the arms. Now find that correct engagement and alignment in this pose. So really drawing that left hip back and in towards the midline, thinking about spinning that right inner thigh back so the right hip moves forward. Then from the front body up, lift the navel. Take a deep breath in, gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale, vinyasa. Step back into that plank, lower down. Find your back bend and downward facing dog. Deep breath in, sigh it out. So I wanna keep that heat building, I'm gonna keep you moving. So we'll do warrior one on both sides, adding in some fun little handstand hops. We'll do it twice together. Bring your feet together. Inhale, reach your right leg straight up. Exhale, thigh to chest, knee to nose, step it forward. Warrior one, inhaling, rising up. Gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale, take the fingertips down. This time, slide your right foot back a little bit and lift your left leg up, standing splits. You can start to fold down, bracing yourself with your left hand, grabbing your right ankle with your right hand, and thinking about pulling your forehead towards your right shin. You can try to keep those hips squared. If you're looking for a little more in that right hamstring, you can open that left leg as high as you like. And then inhale to a flat back. So this is for everyone. It's just working on really conquering any fears you might have with inversions by building the strength and awareness that you need for them. So we're not really gonna go upside down. We're just gonna hop the right foot a couple inches off the ground. Plant your palms flat down underneath the shoulders. Draw the ribs in. Come high up on your right toes. Bend your right knee and exhale. See what it's like to just hop gently off that right foot. If that was fun, do it a couple more times. If it wasn't, step back, plank through the vinyasa. And if you do have that handstand practice, maybe you pop up a couple of times until you find it. I'm still looking for it. <laughs> found it. And then we'll take it back through the vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Just to keep building that heat, let's move it forward. Feet together. Inhale, left leg rises. Exhale, step it forward. Warrior one, inhale, rising up. Gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale, standing splits on this left side. Brace yourself with the right fingertips. Grab your left ankle with your left hand and pull your forehead in. Mm, enjoying this really deep hamstring stretch. The more you pull yourself in and lift that right leg up, the more you're gonna feel it. Inhale to a flat back. Now you know where we're going. Feel free to do what feels good in your body. If you're ready to go upside down, plant the palms flat, always looking between the thumbs, drawing the navel in, inhale, rise to the ball of the left foot, bend the left knee and exhale. Take a few hops, really just looking for the strength in the core, strength in the arms. Maybe you find it upside down in that handstand and then slowly take it back through your vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Great job, take a deep breath through your nose. Sigh it out. Wonderful. All righty, bring your feet together. This time inhale, rise high to the toes, look forward. Bend your knees and exhale, take a light hop or step to the front of the mat. Inhale to a flat back, exhale to fold. Inhale, rising all the way up towards standing. Gaze up as the palms touch, maybe a little heart opening back bend. Exhale, hands to your heart. So what I love so much about yoga is that we can move and flow and really build that heat and then begin to hold some poses, tricking the body, all right? Really tricking the body is a great way to open, to strengthen, and also to start to burn some of those calories that we need. So from here, you're gonna step your right foot to the back of the mat, turn your toes in so your feet are parallel and open your arms out wide. Turn your right toes to face the back of your mat 
and your left heel slightly at an angle, and bend your right knee into warrior two. So you want your right heel to intersect with the arch of your left foot. As you bend into that right knee, you're gonna start to feel the muscles work. The tendency is to bend just a tiny bit and kind of hang out here, which is fine. But if you really wanna to start to strengthen, bend that right knee deeply. Just make sure the right shin is in a straight line. Look over your right fingertips. Keep the knee bent, the right knee that is. Just inhale, lift the sides of the waist, and as you exhale, draw the navel in. Thinking about hugging that right hip in towards the midline, really rolling the left inner thigh back behind you, and keeping that left quadricep engaged. Take a deep inhalation, hopefully you're still smiling, and exhale, bend a little bit deeper into that right knee. You got it. Almost there. It will be worth it. Now flip your right palm. Inhale, place the left fingertips on your left thigh. Reverse your warrior. And because you deserve it, straighten your right leg. Ah, that feels terrific. Then keeping that right leg straight, reach the right fingertips forward all the way until the right ribs are almost parallel to the ground. And then place your right fingertips down, either on the ground to the outside of the right shin. You could even place your hand on the shin. Or if you have a yoga block or a stack of books, you can use those as well. Left arm straight up. As you inhale, imagine that you're lengthening from the tailbone all the way through the crown of the head. And as you exhale, knit the ribs in. Maybe even gaze up if it feels good on your neck. If it doesn't, you can always gaze down. Hmm. Triangle pose, one of my favorite ways to open the side body. Now push down through your feet, inhale, rise all the way back up. Turn your right toes in so that your heels are out and your toes are in. Sweep the hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, press the palms together, and inhale, lift the heart up high, Exhale, fold down for Prasarita Padottanasana, or wide-legged forward fold. You're more than welcome to stay in this shoulder opener position, really reaching the knuckles overhead. If you want to, you can take your hands down underneath you, walking the hands underneath you to bring the head as close to your legs as possible. If inversions are your choice, this is a wonderful place to find tripod headstand. Hands go flat on the ground. Elbows and wrists align. You're right on the crown of the head. You can come up onto your toes and sweep the legs out wide to reach them straight up towards that tripod. Shirsasana B. Once you get there, try to find a plank position from the torso all the way through the toes. Ribs in, butt squeezes, thighs squeeze. If you're upside down, slowly begin to come back down. If you're in a shoulder opener variation, bring the hands down to the ground. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, hands to your hips. And inhale, rise all the way up towards standing. Let's balance it out. Turn your left toes to the front of your mat. Right heel slightly back, so your right foot is at an angle. Find that heel to arch alignment bending into your left knee. So yoga is a great way to work the body. But what's really beautiful about it is how we strengthen our mind-body connection. I remember when I first started teaching beginners, how beginners would have a really hard time even hearing which leg they were working on. So here, even in the most accessible warrior poses, make sure that you're aware of your body. You really want to make sure that the left knee is over the foot, not beyond it, that your left thigh is working towards being parallel to the ground. Taking the arms out wide, really strengthening that right leg, use it as an anchor, and breathing. Now there is a reason why these are called warrior poses, right? Because the, the warrior can be calm and collected in the most stressful of times, and I think that's really what we all want from our yoga practice, is that calm mind so that we can accomplish whatever we want in life and be calm through those stressful times. Keep that nice deep bend, flip the left palm, inhale, reverse your warrior, 
feels amazing on the left side of the body. Straighten your left leg. Reward yourself for working so hard. Inhale and exhale. Reach the left fingertips forward and then down into triangle or trikonasana. Using props if you need them, putting the uh, hand on the shin or even on the ground. Most importantly, finding that nice balance between length and strength. So really thinking about lengthening from the tailbone to the crown of the head and drawing the front ribs in. That's when that right side body is really going to lengthen. Push down through your feet. Inhale, rise all the way back up. Exhale, hands to your hips. All you're going to do is step forward. Right foot meets the left. Wonderful job. Bend your knees. Tap the ground with your fingertips. Reach your arms up as you inhale. So we've worked the legs. All we're going to do is balance out the spine in this chair pose. Inhale, gaze up as the palms touch. Exhale, hands to your heart. You're going to twist that left elbow to the right knee. I always love to finish any standing flow with nice balancing twists. Really great way to reset the spine. Now, any variations you want to do here, if you want to take it into a deeper twist, maybe reach the left hand down, the right arm up, you're welcome to do so. If binding is your thing, feel free. You can also just stay in the traditional twist. Now, inhale back to your chair. Try to keep the bend in the knees. This is where working our legs is really important. Exhale, hands to your heart, twist to the other side, right elbow, left knee making sure the weight stays predominantly in the heels, that you move the shins back, press your right elbow down and revolve your right ribs to the left, feeling maybe the quads burning, I know I am too. Any arm variations you might have done on the other side. Inhale back to that chair and exhale, sit all the way down. Take that sitting into lying down. Great job. Hugging your knees in towards your chest, giving yourself a loving squeeze right before we work our core. <laughs> Send your legs straight up towards the sky. Point or flex your feet. It really depends on where you feel the most strength in your legs and core. If this is too much for you, taking your legs down into a 90 degree angle is perfectly fine. Interlace both fingers overhead, so reaching the arms above your head, making a little peaceful yogi gun tends to help with the energy. Lower your left leg almost to the ground. Take a deep inhalation here, and exhale, lift the torso, the shoulder blades up, twisting towards the right. Again, knees can be bent. Inhale, drop back. Exhale now to center. Inhale, drop back, switch legs. So right leg down, left leg up. Exhale, twist to the left. We'll just do five more. Inhale, reach back. Exhale to center. Inhale, reach back, switch legs. Exhale to the right. You got it. Inhale, drop back. Exhale to center. Inhale, drop back, switch legs. Exhale to the left. Two more. Inhale, drop back. Exhale to center. Inhale, drop back, switch legs, exhale to the right. Last one, inhale, drop back, exhale to center. Inhale, drop back, switch legs, exhale to the left. Great job, drop your head back, hug your knees in. Take a quick happy baby pose, grabbing the outer edges of your feet with your hands, elbows to the inner knees, and as you pull the heels down, press the outer hips forward like you're trying to squeeze your butt. That's where you'll get an amazing low back and hip flexor release. Keeping your right leg in this position, place your left foot on the mat. Cross your right ankle over the left knee. Lift the feet up, the knees up, right hand through the keyhole, left hand around the outside of the leg. So you can always hold on to that left shin or hamstring, really just depending on the flexibility in your body. Hmm, thread the needle or any hip opener, so important in the yoga practice and in life in general. We tend to store so much uh, emotional tension in our hips, especially us women. So as you marinate in the practice you just did, as you marinate in maybe your sweat, close your eyes and just 
take a few deep breaths, releasing that unneeded emotional tension. Hmm. Take a deep inhalation. Exhale, sigh it out. Great. Place that left foot down on the mat. We're just going to switch sides. Right foot comes down, left ankle over the right knee, thread the needle. Flexing your left foot, as you push the left shin and knee away from you, use your hands to pull it in at the same time. These counter actions really work together to give you a stretch that is not just a stretch, but also uh, an integrated, engaged stretch, protecting the muscles you're stretching. Hmm. I'm just taking a few deep, long breaths here. Imagining that not only are you creating space between your emotional, physical tension, but also at the same time as you release the physical tension, that mental and spiritual aspect become a little more balanced. One deep breath together, take a deep inhalation in, and sigh it out. Great job. Placing your feet down on the mat, we're going to go into Shavasana now. If you'd like to take Shavasana with a reclined Baddha Konasana, you can take the soles of the feet together, let the knees open wide. I love this position, it really feels great on the inner groins. You'd rather take a traditional Shavasana, feel free to extend the legs forward, open the arms out wide, and close your eyes. Release any control you have over your breath. And imagine that all of the tension from the very center of your body is just melting out through the fingers and toe tips. Relax your jaw your eyes back in their sockets, and just be. Be right here in this moment, relaxed. I love long shavasanas, so feel free to stay here as long as it serves you. If you're ready to move on, slowly bend the knees in towards the chest. Mm, gently beginning to come back into the physical body. And with the eyes lower closed, roll to a side using just the strength in your arms to prop yourself up into a comfortable seat. Hmm. I'm just taking a moment here, a moment in gratitude that you chose to dedicate this time to yourself to practice yoga. And in the spirit of gratitude, joining your hands at your heart in Anjali Mudra. Taking a deep breath in. And exhale, bowing your chin towards your heart. Inhale, lift your chin. Open your eyes. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I'll practice with you again soon here on Aloe Yoga.